Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about four different ways that graduate students pay for school. This video is relevant for master's students and PhD students. And no, I'm not talking about paying out of pocket. PhD students rarely pay for schooling anyway, master's students a little more often. That being said, these are four ways that you can be externally funded for school. And this isn't just a list, I'm also going to elaborate on details, how you can get these funding opportunities, etc. Let's get started. The first way that you can get money to pay for graduate school is an RA ship or research assistantship. It's basically as it sounds, you join a professor's lab doing research for them and in return they pay for your tuition. For PhD students, you have to join a lab anyway. Uh, in many cases, you should ask the professor whether they have funding to give you an RA ship and pay for your school. Otherwise, you have to get your school paid through some other means and I'll talk about that later on. For master's students, you can also apply for RA ships. If you're a master's student, it is a little tougher to get an RA ship relative to a PhD student. And the reason is fairly obvious. When you join a lab, the lab also has to invest time in training you. And if you're a master's student, you're only going to be there one or two years uh, before you leave, while PhD students will be there for five to six years or more. So in many cases, there will be preference in providing an RA ship for PhD students as opposed to master's students, uh, but you shouldn't let that stop you. In order to find RA ships, you can usually check for job postings. Sometimes schools will email the entire department saying that there's an RA position available. Another way you can take initiative is to look at different labs and find a professor that you're interested in working for. Uh, look up their papers, uh, try and understand what kind of research they are, and make sure that it's something you're interested in, and uh, shoot the professor an email. It's possible that they might have an RA position available for you. So that's RA ship. The second way that graduate students can get funded for school is a TA ship or teaching assistant. A lot of people in college already know about TAs. They're usually hired graduate students who have to teach the class. In many cases, departments will send out mass emails explaining uh, job openings for these TA ships. Or there might be a list of courses that require TAs and they'll send that out to the entire department and you can look through them and see which classes you're qualified to teach. In some cases, if you're a PhD student and you join a professor's lab and they don't have enough money to fund you as an RA, they might request that you TA for their class. And in that scenario, the department through this TA ship will pay for your school. Now to get hired to be a TA for a class, it helps to have taken that class or a similar class at your undergrad institution. However, that's not always the case. I do know people who have taught classes that they've never actually taken, um, but they've managed to convince the professors that they'd be good at teaching it. And sometimes they're really just one or two weeks ahead of the rest of the class, um, though that sounds really stressful. And as you can imagine, being a TA is very time consuming. In many cases, you're either going to be leading a lab or a discussion session that requires you to learn the material, prepare for your lab sections. In some cases, you have to grade labs or homeworks. As a TA, you also have to hold office hours, you have to grade final exams, midterms, and you're going to have weekly meetings with the professors and the other TAs. So it does take a lot of time. On the plus side though, it's an opportunity to improve on your teaching skills, uh, to learn the material better, while paying for your graduate school education. So the third way that you can get graduate school paid for is using a fellowship, which is basically a scholarship. So with master's fellowships, you could probably just do a Google search and find them online. Truth be told, I don't know too many master's students who do have fellowships. I do have some friends who have come from, say, Singapore, and then the government basically gives them scholarships to pay for their education, and then they have to go back and work for them. Aside from that, I don't know too many people who have master's fellowships. However, I'm going to focus this discussion mainly on PhD fellowships because it's more common and it's what I'm more familiar with. However, master's people, if you wait just a little bit, I have a funny master's story related to you uh, that I'll tell you right after this. One way you can get a PhD fellowship is sometimes when you get into a PhD program, some schools will offer you a one-year or three-year fellowship as sort of an incentive for you to go to their program. Another way you can get a PhD fellowship is by applying to various organizations either inside your school or outside of the school. So there are three very famous uh, PhD fellowships uh, that you can apply for if you're a US citizen or permanent resident. So these three fellowships are the NSF Graduate Fellowship, the National Science Foundation Fellowship. Uh, that's the one I have. I might make a future video on that. So if you subscribe, you'll be able to see that video. There's also the NDSEG Fellowship, uh, National Defense Science and Engineering Graduate Fellowship. There's also the Hertz Fellowship. So NSF and NDSEG, these are three-year fellowships and the Hertz Fellowship is a five-year fellowship. And again, these are very famous fellowships that you can apply for as a PhD student. Some of them you can even apply as a senior in college. Of course, you have to demonstrate that you're planning to do a PhD program. So the really nice thing about having a PhD fellowship when you're a PhD student is basically freedom. For instance, if there's a professor's lab that you're trying to get into and it's very, very popular, uh, they only have limited funding. So there's only so many RA ships that they can give out. However, if you have your own fellowship, the lab is much more likely to take you because who's gonna turn down like free labor? Another advantage of having the fellowship is say, if you're in a research lab and you decide that your research interests have changed and you wanna switch labs, 
you can actually take your funding with you. Otherwise, you'd have to worry about, you know, losing your RE ship from the previous lab by going to this new lab. So yes, fellowships for PhDs are very, very nice to have. All right, so the master story. So I had a friend who actually got into a PhD program, but what they did is they never actually wanted the PhD. They only wanted a master's. So they got into the program, got a fellowship, used the fellowship to pay for the first two years of school to get their master's, and then they bolted. Like, I'm not encouraging this, but I'm saying it's been done. And finally, the fourth and final way that you can get your graduate school paid for is if you're already working for a company, you can get your company to pay for you to go back to school and get like a master's degree. I don't personally know any PhD students who have had a company pay for their degree, uh, but I can't imagine it never have happening. So basically, if you're already working for a company and the company has a lot of money, uh, you might be able to convince them to let you go back to school and have them pay for that degree. I know plenty of master's students who have done this. Some of them choose to continue to work full time and then they kind of do the master's as a part-time thing, but that sounds very tiring. I'm sure you can also negotiate to take time off from work and go to school for a year or two and finish your master's degree and then come back to the company. And the reason companies can be down for this is if you go back to school and acquire a new skill set and you come back to the company, you could be a more effective worker. Uh, so that's why like companies would be happy to pay for your degree if they think that you can benefit and that would benefit the company as a whole. So that's the fourth and final way I'm going to talk about with regards to paying for graduate school. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and comment if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future stuff and uh, see you next time.